Modern members of the family elephant today look nothing like any other species on Earth. Modern, their long trunk and tusks, their massive size, and their few living representatives makes this very well the case. However, it wasn't always this way, as elephants have been around for a very long time, although in different forms. However, in this video, I will be covering the three most basal, or at least the three earliest families of proboscideans, looking at every genre and where and when they lived. Erotherium azurum was the first species of proboscidean to appear in the fossil record 61 million years ago in Morocco. When this animal appeared in the mid-Paleocene, Morocco was much warmer and more humid, being home to tropical rainforests, the likes of which future proboscideans would enjoy for a little while longer. When this animal appeared in the mid-Paleocene, Morocco was much warmer and more humid, being home to tropical rainforests, the likes of which future proboscideans would enjoy for a little while longer. When this animal appeared in the mid-Paleocene, Morocco was much in spite of its similar front molars, it can be agreed that Erotherium looked nothing like any of its future descendants, aside from one. The first family of proboscideans to ever appear was Numidotheridae, and the first member of this family was Phosphotherium, specifically P. Esquilli. Phosphotherium lived in the late Paleocene of Morocco 59 million years ago. It stood around one foot tall at the shoulder and weighed about 17 kilograms, about the same size as a large dog. Similar to its Erotherium ancestor, this animal was believed to feed on aquatic vegetation in tropical swamp forests. Simil Dowotherium was next, living in the early Eocene epoch 55 million years ago. This genre also represents when proboscideans began growing in size, as Dowotherium may have weighed up to 200 kilograms in life. Nemetotherium coholens, or simply Nemetotherium, lived in Middle Eocene North Africa 46 million years ago, likely living similar to its ancestors as a swamp-dwelling mammal. This genus both had a strange forehead, which was almost dome shape, and a very short proboscis, similar to a modern-day tapir. Not only was Nemetotheridae the first proboscidean family as a whole, it also began a new suborder known as the Plesiolophantiforms, which is essentially a more basal suborder than modern elephants, which are simply known as Elephantiforms. The next family of proboscideans and Plesiolophantiforms to appear was Barotheridae, which is also the first family to spread out of Africa. Barotheridae was not diverse at all, with only two genera and three species among them, similar to modern elephants. Barotherium grave and Barotherium omanzi were both a part of the family's namesake, Barotherium, which appeared in the late Eocene and disappeared in the early Oligocene. Barotherium lived in the swamplands of what was Eocene Egypt and Libya. It didn't inhabit the jungles that Nemetotheridae once inhabited, due to the fact that the Earth's climate was beginning to dry up, although I'll get to that in just a bit. Barotherium was the first massive proboscidean, weighing around 2,000 kilograms and standing an average of 1.9 metres tall. The only other genus in the family was Amanotherium, living in early Oligocene Oman. Unfortunately, not much online information is known about this animal. But from what I could find, Amanotherium likely weighed around one and a half tons and grew to a height of about 1.1 metres tall. A third, unrelated genus to the Plesiolophantiforms was Morotherium, which formed its own family, Morotheridae, of which it is the only member of. There are as many as five valid assigned species in the genus Morotherium living from 37 to 35 million years ago in North Africa, particularly Libya, Algeria, and Egypt. Morotherium likely lived similar to all other early proboscideans, which is to say similar to a tapir or hippo, feeding on semi-aquatic plants in a warm tropical environment. Unfortunately, all three of these unique proboscidean families would go completely extinct in the Grand Kapoor, which was a global climate change event. The continent of Antarctica became to freeze over, and all the ice began to lower sea levels across the world. 
This led to the reduction in freshwater habitats, including swamps, rivers, and marshes. And it happened all too quickly for all these early families of proboscideans to adapt. Various other families of other mammals, such as Basilosaurids, Dinoceratids, Brontotherids, and Mesonychids, also disappeared as a result of this event. The only family of plesiolophantiforms to survive the Grand Capre were the massive Dinotherids. There are two known subfamilies of Dinotherids, but the one I want to discuss first is Chilgotherinae. There are two known subfamilies of Dinotherids. The only genus in the subfamily is Chilgotherium itself, which was a relatively small proboscidean, weighing only one and a half tons and growing to a shoulder height of two metres. The relatively distinct cranial anatomy from this genus is enough to warrant a distinct subfamily, of which Chilgotherium is the only member of. The other subfamily, Dinotherinae, contain two genera. The other subfamily, Dinotherinae, contain two genera. The other sub Prodinotherium was the first living from 20 to 15 million years ago from the early to the mid Miocene epoch, with the three species living throughout the Middle East, Eastern Africa, and Europe. Some individuals could reach 2.7 metres tall and weigh up to 5,000 kilograms, so they were larger than Chilgotherium, though smaller than their descendant. Dinotherium proper is iconic for a few reasons. First are its downward curving tusks, which were likely ancestral to the whole family. These tusks would have allowed Dinotherium and its relatives to scrape bark off trees a little bit easier. These tusks would have allowed Dinotherium and its... The largest species was Dinotherium giganteum, which could have reached 4 metres tall and weighed up to 12 tonnes, making it the first proboscidean to exceed the African bush elephant in size. A more typically sized species, Dinotherium bozasi, would have been around 12 feet or 3.6 metres tall, weighing around 9 metric tonnes. A more the three recognised and two other possible species of Dinotherium were widespread, living from Romania to Thailand to Africa, making Dinotheridae the first family of proboscideans to spread far from Africa. Dinotherium was also the genus that survived by far the longest of all plesiolophantiforms, surviving until as recently as only one million years ago, in what is today southern Africa. It's possible that early humans would have encountered these ancient behemoths from a bygone era, which were the last of their ancient lineage. It's possible with the extinction of Dinotherium in the early Pleistocene epoch around one million years ago, an entire suborder of proboscideans went completely extinct after successfully surviving for 54 million years.